Amen. Yes, you head on back. So tonight I want to talk to you about your message. That's the, that's the title tonight. Your message. What's your message? And I have a... What? Thanks. Your message. I have candy up here, by the way. So, uh, your, your message. Now, I have 15 slides that we're not going to go to yet. But I have 15 slides of uh, different icons, different things that as soon as you saw them, you would know what they're all about. Because they've just been ingrained in culture. They've been ingrained in you. And when you look at them, you're going to know what they are. So when we begin to go through these, <coughs> we'll go through one at a time, and if you're the first person I hear shout out what it is, you get a piece of candy. Okay? All right, so I'll be throwing candy at you, but I'm going to throw it like a fastball at you, so very good. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. So your message. So this whole thing is, what is the message that you're sending? What is the message of your life? What is it that you are communicating? All right? Now. As we go into these slides, let's see what these slides communicate. Now, don't, don't hesitate. You can shout this out as soon as you see it or know it. Matt, let's go to that first one. Ah, oh, I heard someone over here. It was me. I know. Five people raised their hands. Here's a couple. You guys can find out. Okay. Very good. Energizer. Everybody knows it's the Energizer Bunny. What's that picture saying? Keeps on going. It goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, these are great batteries. They last forever. All right. Obviously, it's com it's not true, but yes, that's what it's communicating. Energize your buddy. Just keeps on going. You guys got it, right? Get it? Get it? Uh, okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, oh, that was in unison. Candy for everybody. Candy for everybody. All right. That was good. That was good. That was good. All right. All right. Good, 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 good. What is the message that Facebook's communicating? Social networking. Very good. That's great. You get that. You get that. That's good. Wow. It's complicated. All right. Let's go to the next one. That's all right. Michigan. What? That's Michigan. I thought I'd give them a little FaceTime since I don't think they'll be put on TV next year. So we show that. Alright. How about the next one? Apple. Apple. Oh. Hey, that was Jackie. That was fast. Apple. That's right. Maybe it might have been because noise travels at a certain rate and Jackie was the closest. And that's who, that's who I heard. Through. I don't know. That's right. What's Apple communicating? Okay, iPod or Macintosh, computers that don't crash, I don't know, you know. Alright, next one. Twitter! Twitter! Oh, sorry, Sierra. I meant to go to Chance, but you can keep it, you don't got to give it to us. Alright, Twitter! Twitter! What's Twitter communicating? Social network. Social network, good. Next one. We by no means does this ministry endorse any type of smoking or cigarettes or anything like that. But you guys know what it was, didn't you? Right away. What's the message it's communicating? Smoke me, I'm good. You know, I don't know. Something like that. Okay? Next one. Oh, uh, see, I don't even know who's more candy to you. That was good. I mean, Chance has his hands up every one. Like, it was me! It was me! <laughs> Disney World, that's right. What does Disney World communicate? It's her job. Making dreams come true. I love it, I love it. Making dreams come true. You guys can play that. That's funny. Right, next one. Mario. What's it communicate? Specifically, what's it? Nintendo. Who said that? Yeah. 
exploded. Nintendo, that's right. Everybody knows Mario. Nintendo, right? Communicating a message. See you guys. Keep, let's keep going. Next one. Pandora. Pandora. Good. I'm not giving it to Derek. Alright. Alright, good. Pandora. Oh, yeah. Next one. Get a picture of me. MTV. MTV. I even marked out the TV. You guys still got it. MTV. What's MTV communicating? Trash. Communicates trash. Alright. Well, but you have to be on this side, though, so you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing. Next one. Xbox, good job, good job. What's Xbox communicating? COD, anger, that's right. I have to admit, you know, I don't, I don't promote like shooting games, especially with teenagers or in our ministry. But I do play Call of Duty, like every once in a while with my friends. And I have to tell you, there are some weeks that I get done with the week and I'm like, I just gotta kill people. <laughs> I just need a release right now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play video games and shoot people. You usually know. my friends. I usually play like John Nick and Matt Kreditch and a couple other my buddies. That's because we need competition, Chance. We need competition. I don't think you've ever been. No, I'm just kidding. All right, Xbox. Keep going. iPod. iTunes. Yeah. Next one. It's yellow. It's green over here, but it's yellow over here. Courtney up there. You know, 
we have to ask ourselves, or Courtney would have to ask herself the question, what would everybody say about me? Because what message am I communicating? I want to revisit Paul. We're going to get back to that. I want to revisit Paul tonight. Do you guys care if I suck on this jawbreaker when I talk? Okay. Um, so, let's talk about this message. Uh, 50 years or so, I'm going to kind of, we, we want to talk about Paul tonight. I want to take you back there. So stick with me. There, there's some scripture, but I want to, I want to emphasize the message he was communicating before Christ and the message he was communicating after he encountered Christ, after he encountered Jesus, because they're radically different. So 50 years after the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, Christianity is growing, and Paul comes into the scene in Scripture. Paul's this religious leader who doesn't believe Christ was the Messiah. He doesn't believe Christ was the Messiah. He didn't believe that Jesus Christ died for everyone's sins. He didn't believe that. And he violently opposes all who do. He hates Christianity so much that he actually goes to the chief priest uh, uh, of that day and gets permission to go and imprison and put to death those who are being a part of the way or those who were following Christ at that time period. I can't speak with that jawbreak in the law. My mom, I feel like I'm spitting everywhere. All right, so here is Paul trying to destroy the church trying to shut down this whole Jesus was the Messiah uh, uh, thing that's happening. Uh, and, and, and that Jesus provided salvation. And that uh, uh, you know, salvation comes through Christ. He's trying to shut all of that down. To the point that he's literally traveling around the region, putting followers of Christ in prison because of their beliefs. Men, women, probably not children, but men and women. Putting them in prison. So... As Paul was writing the book of Galatians in Scripture, he reminds his readers about his old way of life. Obviously, he encountered Christ before he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, which he did. All right, But in Galatians, he is reminding his readers of the way he used to be, the message he used to communicate. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. Listen, it'll be on the screens too. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by His marvelous grace. Then it pleased Him to reveal His Son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. A Gentile is anybody who's not Jewish. So we're all Gentiles, unless there's somebody that's Jewish here. Okay? Uh, just so you guys knew what the Gentiles were. All right, so Jesus meets Paul. Paul meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. Paul's on his way to persecute and imprison the Christians in Damascus when God interrupts him. God interrupts him. The, the story is found in Acts chapter 9, uh, and I want to read that to you this morning. Again, it will be on the screen. So meanwhile, just listen to the story. This is Saul before. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So I went to the high priest to request the letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for the cooperation to arrest any, uh, to arrest the, any followers of the way that he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Hit the lights from heaven. Hit the really bright lights. Now imagine this on the road. Imagine this on the road. Lights a hundred times brighter than this just out of the sky, nails you in the eyes, and completely blinds you. You fall off your horse, you're on the ground, and you hear a voice start talking to you. All right, you can turn it off. You're welcome. Everybody's awake. Let's go. So, Saul, Saul, this voice, you know, says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord, Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless. 
For they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, because he had fallen off his horse. But when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions, his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. I'm going to read you two more or three more verses here. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight, Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now, and I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in, laying hands on him so that he can see again. So this is three days later that Ananias goes to Paul, lays his hands on him, prays for him, and Paul gets healed and regains his sight. Now, Ananias didn't want to go. I'm just giving you a little background message. Ananias didn't want to go. And Ananias actually said, Lord, why are you telling me to go? I mean, Lord, this guy's persecuting the church. Isn't this the man who's putting your people in chains? And God said, yes, Ananias, but I want you to go. I want you to go heal Paul because I've called him. I've chosen him. All right? So what is Paul's message up to this point? What is the message that he's communicating? Interactive. Interaction. 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 What? Death to Christians. Is that what somebody said? Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to destroy the church. I mean, if you put Saul's picture up, in any synagogue, anywhere around that area, and that and and, and Judea, got anywhere there, I mean, they're gonna say, "Oh, that's 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 well, God changed his name to Paul, but that's Saul. That's Saul. That's one of the religious, you know, zealots. I mean, he's just has great zeal, and he's going out, and he's persecuting the church, he's putting people in prison, men and women who are followers of the way. I mean, people knew what he was all about. People knew his message." Now I want you to see the change in his message. His message begins to change. I want to read it to you. It's in Colossians chapter 1. Paul writes, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear Son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Christ is the visible, is the visible image of an invisible God. He existed before anything was created and supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can, uh, we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities, and the unseen world. Everything that was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all. Uh, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him God reconciled. Sorry. Reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. By means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you. Who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions, yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ and his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. How has Paul's message changed? This is a guy that went from church to church, is what you'd say in those days, synagogue to synagogue, persecuting, putting in prison men and women, Christians, people like you and me, in chains and taking them to jail. How has his message changed when you read that last passage of Scripture? What's he doing now? He's preaching the Word, isn't he? He's telling you the truth. He's, he's teaching people how it is. He's writing to the, the church in Colossus. And he's saying, guys, this is the Jesus that can transform you. This is the Jesus that has saved you. This Jesus that died on the cross and shed his blood. He did that for you. So that you could be rescued. So that you could be saved. So that you could be healed. His message is changing. And his message has completely changed. It's a great change in message. Paul was communicating and living his life. I mean, everything about Paul was kill, kill, kill. Destroy the church. Destroy the way. Put them all in prison. 
Now he's given his life to spreading the gospel, to advancing the church, to sharing Christ with everyone, everywhere. Paul embraced his new identity as an ambassador for Christ. In fact, Paul became the greatest missionary that ever lived. He's the greatest missionary that ever lived. And as passionate followers of Christ, when we commit our lives to Jesus, we are communicating changes. When we commit our lives to Jesus, we are communicating changes in our life. The reasons we're living our lives, the way we are changed, our purposes in life, they change. The message that we are portraying, the message that we symbolize is changing when we commit our life to Christ. If you commit your life to Christ and nothing changes, then... then Nothing ever happened. You might have said the words, but in your heart you didn't mean them and nothing ever happened. See, when Christ comes in, there's transformation that begins to take place. Sure, sometimes it's a process. It's not like you're just radically different in a heartbeat. Sometimes it's a process. It's a learning process. It's learning to trust God. It's learning to know Him. It's learning to uh, of what is well, what God's heart is, what His desires are. There's this process that takes place. But yet, there is a change in your message that begins from the moment you accept Jesus Christ. It starts. Your message begins to change. Let's talk about being an ambassador for a minute. The word ambassador, the, the, the definition of ambassador, is a diplomatic official of the highest rank sent by a government to represent it on a temporary mission. That's an awesome definition. A diplomatic official of the highest rank sent by a government to represent it on a temporary mission. And guess what? We're all ambassadors. Think about that. We are a diplomatic official of heaven of the highest rank sent by the kingdom of heaven, sent by God to represent the kingdom of heaven, to represent Jesus Christ on a temporary, temporary mission. Temporary, temporary mission. We are ambassadors. This life is temporary, isn't it? In fact, in the scope of eternity, this life's about this long. In the scope of it. This is a temporary mission that we have been sent as ambassadors, just as Paul was sent. Our message is an ambassador type of message. We are representing, we are reflecting Jesus Christ to a world. We have been chosen. You have been set apart and been chosen to be a diplomatic official of the highest grade of the kingdom of heaven. That's you. You know when an ambassador goes from our country, they have the full authority of our president? When an ambassador goes from our country to another country to either negotiate or build relationship, they have full authority of our country on the president's behalf. They represent the United States of America, the most powerful nation in the world. They represent that to that country. They have full authority. Think about that. You represent the kingdom of heaven. You represent Jesus Christ. You have full authority. You have the authority of Jesus. You have access to all that Jesus has access to. You have access to the kingdom because God has called you to be an ambassador for him. Listen. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 19-21. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting God, uh, people's sins against them. And he, was committed, uh, uh, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Talking about Jesus. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Man, man, Paul comes right out here in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and man says, Man, we are ambassadors of Christ. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul's in prison. He's in chains. He's been put in prison now. Oh, just like he was putting people in prison for the way, he's been put in prison now. He's in chains. And he says, man, for which I am an ambassador in chains to make known the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, this message has changed, hasn't it? See, Jesus is not a simple product that we add to our lives and we try to sell to others. It's not like this hair gel. It's not a product. You know, my wife always tries to get me to buy that... Uh, What's it called for men? Just for men? You know, because, you know, I get gray right here. I'm starting to get gray hair. It's all that wisdom that's just oh, coming up out of me. You know, she tries to give me that just for men stuff all the time. But, you know, it's like a product. Jesus isn't this product that we can just purchase. Or well, this product that we can have that we just try to sell to others. We don't sprinkle ourselves with a little bit of Jesus dust to make everything taste better or go our way. We don't do that. I mean, he's God. And when we became a Christian, he becomes our king, period. When, he become, when we become a Christian, he becomes our king, period. And as an ambassador, your mission is to represent Christ. You stand for his kingdom while living in this one. Paul also said you're not of this world. You're of another world. All right? You don't belong to this world. You belong to a different kingdom. You belong to another world. All right? You, you are ambassadors. As an ambassador, your mission is to represent Christ. You speak for Him. You love people on his, on his behalf. You show compassion and mercy in His name. You stand for truth and justice as His representative. God has given you a mission. Just as Jesus was sent into the world to rescue us, He has sent you into the world to rescue others. You have a mission. Our youth group goes on short-term mission trips uh, once a year. You know, we go to different countries. Last year we went to uh, uh, Peru. This year we're going to El Salvador. And our youth group goes on these trips. But as a Christian, each day is a mission. It's not a one time a year. It's not one week out of the year. As a follower of Christ, as a Christian, you are on a mission every day. Your life is a mission trip. Your life is a mission trip. Every moment of every day, you are to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And your mission has eternal significance. You may think this is a huge challenge or, or a difficult mission. But I want to tell you, it's easier than you think when you allow God to be in control. When God becomes Lord of your life. And you give up control to Him. So that He's leading you and guiding you and directing you and speaking to you. And he's, he's leading your life. When you do that, it becomes a lot easier to be an ambassador for Him. If you haven't given God complete control, then, yeah, it's going to be real difficult to be an ambassador for Christ. But if God is oozing out of you, He's oozing out of you, if you've become the temple of the living God, if you've surrendered your life, your future, and today to God, then He has filled you, and you walk in the power of His presence. You walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God promised, man, I'm just not going to, Leave you to your own, man. I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to empower you. My Spirit, God's Spirit, lives inside you to empower you, to walk with you, to show you the truth, and to lead you each step of your life. If you surrendered your life and your future, and today to God, He's filled you with His Holy Spirit. And let's face it: most of your high school, middle school, middle school campuses are going to end up probably going to hell if you don't do something about it. If your light does not shine, if we are not ambassadors of Christ, if we are not allowing God to ooze out of us and begin to influence those that God has given us, then He's going to have to depend on someone else to do that. I mean, man, that's a, that's a big responsibility. And I'm not saying you've got to go win your entire school to God. And that'd be awesome. That's a great plan. But man, win your arena of influence. If you got four, if you're a young lady and you hang out with four young ladies, four other girls, and they're your close friends and you guys do everything together, that's your arena of influence. 
you begin to be an ambassador for Christ to them. If you're a young man and you got like three buds that you just close with and you do everything with, man, that's your arena of influence. That's who you begin to witness to. That's who you are Christ's light to. Man, don't think of the entire school coming to Christ. That's overwhelming. Start with your group of friends and let it spread. Get them on fire for God. Let it spread. That's how it works. You know, I, I told you my own story. Most of you have heard my story. Christian, uh, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't follow Christ until I was 19 years old. 19 years old, I gave my heart to God. What was the message of my life? The message of my life was do whatever makes you happy. Do whatever's fun. I mean, partying, drinking, whatever the case is. I mean, do whatever you want. That's the message of my life. That's all God got a hold of me. My message changed. Radically. Because I was changed radically. I mean, God did a 180 on me. I mean, I was heading in this direction, then all of a sudden I was heading in this direction. All my passions, all my dreams, all my desires start going in a different direction. God did something huge in my life. My message began to change. So I'm going to ask you some questions tonight. Worship band, if you guys will come forward. What is, what is it that you're communicating with your life tonight? What's your message? When I say life, I'm talking about your conversations. I'm talking about your actions. I'm talking about your responses to the people and situations around you. I'm talking about your attitudes. What message are you communicating tonight, at this moment, to your friends, to your parents, to your teachers, to God? What is your message? What are you communicating? And remember, we're all communicating. We're all communicating a message, whether we want to say we are or not. We're all communicating something. So tonight, the worship band's going to play. I've got a long roll of paper, and I'm going to roll all the way out to the front here. I'm going to spread pin, uh, pe pins, pens all over it. And just as a challenge to you tonight, I want you to come up when you're ready, and I want you to write down the message that you are portraying. I want you to write out. It's going to be like an element journal. Now, you don't have to sign it. You don't got to put your name on it unless you want to. But for some of you, when you come forward and you begin to write on that paper, I mean, for some of you, there's going to probably be uh, uh, some repentance that you're writing out. God, forgive me because I haven't been living my life for you. I haven't been reflecting you. I have not been an ambassador for you. But God, I want to be. Forgive me. And I want to start fresh. For some of you, uh, it might be that... Uh, uh, God, you know, man, I, I'm living for you. I love you. I, it's not that I don't want to be, but God, man, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared. God, uh, I mean, I need help with the message. I know the message is inside of me, but I need help communicating that message. I need help communicating the message that I really want people to know me by. So maybe it's just a little prayer that you write out to God. For some of you, man, you're just... For some of you, man, you might have to come up here and you just need to write, God, right now, these are the people I'm committed to sharing the message to. And you're going to be writing names on there. You say, these people right here, blah, 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 this, this, this person, that person, this person. These are the people I want to start being an ambassador to. God, give me the strength. I want to be the light. I want to be the ambassador of these. It doesn't matter where you are right now. Today, up to this point, it doesn't matter. It's in the past, right? It doesn't matter. But what you do right now might start something new for you in your life. And for some of you right now, this moment in your life, just like when I was 19 and my message began to change, tonight, right now, your message may begin to start in your journey. And again, I, like I said, it's not going to change overnight. Some of them will. But your message will begin to develop. And it's got to start somewhere. So that might be you tonight. 
You might have to come up here and say, God, I've never surrendered my life to you. And I need to tonight. And God, I want to, I, I give you my life. And maybe that's all you're right. God, I give you my life. And I want my message to begin to change. And I want my message to start over right now. Will you guys stand with me? Eric's going to lead us in the song, and I'm going to give you time just to come up and write. We're going to pray, and then I'll just listen to you. Okay?